Well, welcome everyone to the Lansing Catholic Podcast. This is our weekly Cougar Chat. I'm Father Joe, the chaplain here. I'm Mr. Stolpa, Dean of Intellectual Formation. And we've got a couple of things going on this week, so we'll start with our updates. Uh, on today, Monday, April 29th, we have a Diocesan Vocations Day here at the high school. They kind of do this, I think that all the high schools host this. So they do it in different areas of the diocese and invite middle school kids from all over the place. They're estimating we're going to have like 500 students here. Is that in that addition day. to our 400? In addition to our own 400. What are they going to be doing the whole time, Father? So we're pretty much going to be in the gym. We have to set up the gym like an all school mass. So we'll start with mass, I believe. And then we have a talk for the girls in there. And the boys are going to go to the auditorium. And then they're going to do something together at the end. I don't know. It's not really my event. I'm just going to be there. But um, I have to help set up for the all school mass. Set so stuff. is this for all the like middle school partner school kids yes. coming? So when we have all school mass, our students will not be there. No the school. Okay, no. that's nine hundred kids in the gym. Yeah, no, no, no. Our students will not be affected by this. They're going to have a regular day of school. We just happen to have five hundred other students that will be in the gym. Okay, during the day, they're going to love that. Yep. What Did else? you go to that when you were a child? No. I almost never went to any vocation events when I was a kid, honestly. Even though, like, I wanted to be a priest and all that, I just didn't. How, what is our vocation situation like for the diocese? How many seminarians do we have? How many people do we have who find these things sure. useful? Well, I'd say in terms of our, our priestly vocations, we're doing okay. And we're doing a lot better than some other places. Like, for example, the Archdiocese of Detroit is getting in, to be in a, a really tough spot because they have so many parishes and they have very few uh, guys in formation. So I don't know what they're going to do in the next, like, 10, 20 years. They're going to just be in a real tight spot. Also, Saginaw Diocese is in a similar boat. But Lansing is doing okay. We're not doing great, but, uh, like, we're, we're definitely beginning to get to the point I can see anyways because I'm a little more involved or just aware of – priest assignments and parish openings, we're getting to the point where we're really feeling the pinch, where there just are not enough priests around, and there may be some parishes that are just going to have to close because we just don't have a priest to send there. And yeah, I think until that happens, people don't really recognize how badly we need more vocations until all of a sudden their home parish is like, um, we don't have anybody. <laughs> we're out today. So we got to pray for vocations. I mean, we have a lot of guys in seminary, which is great, but we, we still need more uh, if we want to just maintain the same number of priests in active ministry. So Very good thing good. to pray for. So Friday, Father, I don't know if you know about this. Hopefully you do. It's the Workathon. Yes. So this is when all of our students and um, some other volunteers, alumni, parents can come in, and we go out to the community and we help. So uh, we we build things, we clean up gardens. Maddie, we have Maddie Peters with us. We'll get it. What have you done for Workathon? Hello, thank you for having me. So Workathon has always been one of my favorite events. I remember my I think sophomore year Workathon. I went to the St. Francis Retreat Center, and it's just really nice to be able to you know clean up for the community and also be with like your best friends while you're doing it. So I've really enjoyed the event. If you were to to divide up the amount of work you do versus the amount of time hanging out and <laughs> making silly jokes, what percentages do you think they are? I mean, I have to go with 50-50, <laughs> just, just to be fair. But I think realistically, it might be like 25, you know, and 75. So but, it's it's a pretty impressive thing. I think when, when we come in the morning and there mm -hmm. are just piles of rakes, there are piles of shovels, <laughs> there are garbage bags, and everybody goes out in the community Except for me. I go to the <laughs> retirement home and I play bingo. Yeah, I was going to ask because it sounds like a joke, but that's literally what that's you literally did last I, I'm pretty sure this is an indictment of my inability <laughs> to do physical labor. And so they all just said, uh, Mr. Stolpe, you need to just go hang out with the older folk and play bingo. So we get back from our work sites and we're like <laughs> Sweaty muddy. And dirty. We've been rained on for hours. We've got blisters from doing rakes. And then you get back and... <laughs> I'm all like, cheery because they've been serving us tea and crumpets the whole yeah. time. So I gotta, I gotta work this out so that I can go. I want to a necklace. I, like I won a necklace last year. Not that I won. I think one of the people just gave it to me because they felt bad for me and how bad I was at bingo. So if anybody wants to help out with Workathon, you can contact Mr. Vries. Uh, that's on Friday, and we certainly could use the help. We it's a great time for some alumni and parents to get involved. So we'd be and it is happy it is a half you. day too, right? It's a half day. Yep. So, so we'll but be we done. have mass at the beginning. Yep, mass at the beginning for everybody. And then we go off to our work sites, and then we're done by noon. And we all get shirts. Yes. Yes. And the staff does a little luncheon, so the staff gets to have lunch at the end, which is nice. That is nice. We all get to compare notes. Yes. 
Well, that's pretty much all we have this week. So let's uh, switch over to our official interview. We kind of started a little early there, Madeline, but, <laughs> but thanks. Okay. She was ready for it. Thanks for coming yes. on the show. Thank you. Madeline is one of our seniors. So we're trying to focus on getting some interviews with our seniors while we still have them. So yes. here we go. So let's start with asking, what have you changed since your first? No, sorry. Sorry. We're going to have to edit that out, Father. Let me ask you. <laughs> yeah, let's let's Madeline. Let's start the okay, go ahead. So since your very first day walking in the, the halls as a freshman, yes, okay, you were just a little tyke, 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And Father, I don't know what you were like as a freshman, but I was 5'3", 90 pounds. So between my senior, my freshman year and my senior year, I grew like a foot and put on you know, 50 pounds. You are still quite tiny, so that yes. probably didn't happen. No. But how have you changed in the four years since you started? Well, yeah, definitely not physically, <laughs> but uh, I have grown so much in my spiritual life. It's kind of insane because when I first came to Lansing Catholic, I had no intention of growing in the faith whatsoever. I was aware, like, yes, I'm at a Catholic school. Technically, yes, I'm a Catholic. I've been confirmed, but it was just never an interest of mine until I started to actively, like, go to mass, go on the retreats, and I saw the joy that the faith was bringing to my friends, and I decided it was something that I just had to do and get involved in. So that is the biggest way I've changed is in my spiritual life. When you were a freshman, you had this, you, you were presented these opportunities to go to mass and yes. retreats. Did you grumble? Did you like, I don't understand why we have to do this? Or did you go along with it and slowly built up your Oh, devotion? yeah. I mean, yeah. Sometimes I was like, I don't want to be doing this. But I, I think it was a lot better when I was with my friends doing it because they never had that reaction or at least they never expressed it. So I was always able to come into it more fully because of the people I was surrounded by, which is why I'm grateful to go to a Catholic school because that probably wouldn't have happened if I wasn't. Because right now you do, you do a lot of the did you go on Kairos? I did. So yeah. you went on Kairos, junior you year. went on junior year, mm -hmm. you've been to Damascus. I have not been to Damascus, oh, unfortunately. How'd that one slip through the cracks? <laughs> so you do a lot of the other things that are involved with the spiritual. You always help Mr. Breeze with things. Yes, I do. And it's just a, a part of your life that you never thought you'd have. No, no. And I think especially service has a lot to do with that. I really came into enjoying like volunteer work, which is why I like workathon a lot. And I remember my freshman year, I started making cards for, you know, the uh, seniors and like living communities and stuff. And it's just, it was just really unexpected. But I think a lot of that had to do with my faith, you know, like constant prayer and realizing that service is kind of how I show my love and appreciation to people. So how will you carry that to your, what are you doing next year? First of all. Okay. So next year I'm going to Michigan State okay. University to study business and I hope to continue my faith. Like at college, I know that's when a lot of people fall out of their faith. So I'm going to be diligent to like go to mass and hopefully, you know, find friends that are also interested in doing the same because community is a big thing for me. I need people around me that are also interested in doing. Will that. we still find you in Mr. Bree's office during your <laughs> off periods? I, gosh, I mean, probably. I think so. <laughs> I think she'll she'll try to drag me in here at some point. <laughs> And what is the the family situation like in terms of your faith? Are they supportive of this, or is this, are you becoming an outlier here in this? So yeah, they are supportive, but I think I've always taken it a little bit more seriously since coming to high school. So I'm very grateful for their support, but I would say it's more so with my friends and the people here that I've developed my faith with. I see. In the classroom, what have you been surprised mm -hmm. about yourself that you've either not loved or loved or? A book that you really are taking away from here so my classes have been a really good experience because I've had I've been so lucky to have really great teachers and you know friends in my classes and I've made friends with people that I never would have expected to make friends with and I think my favorite classes were like my junior year English class my sophomore year English class I could name a bunch of them but what I'm most surprised is that I'm able to like maintain like socializing and making new friends and also being really good at my academics because, I mean, it sounds silly, but when I was, like, in middle school, I was not a good student, like, academically. I was, I kind of doubted, like, my intelligence and stuff. And once I just grew more confident in that, it's, like, it was, like, a light switch. Everything changed. And I was able to maintain a social life and also do good in my classes. So that surprised me. Any advice for next year's senior class or any incoming Ooh. students? I would say don't be afraid to, like, go out and make new friends and then also it's it's a bit more of like a silly one but dual enroll if you can at lcc <laughs> or i don't know if we're off or are they offering davenport next year 
I uh, we no? are we are actually offering an entrepreneur class. Okay, cool. So the, the we're we're getting this program where you essentially are going to start your own business. Yeah. And okay. and your your whole goal of the class is to make a dollar. Yeah. Not more would be great, but if you can turn a profit. <laughs> Just at least one. Dollar. Yes. Yes. So <laughs> Yeah, so I would say take some of those unexpected classes because you know, it can kind of lead you into like a career path. Cuz when I took the Davenport classes, I did marketing and management, and that's sort of how I found my love for like the business world for the for the freshmen coming in. So Maddie, where did you go to um, your primary schools? I went to St. Thomas. So Third of grade. your when you came here as a freshman, did you kind of gravitate towards those St. Thomas people? Did you uh, try to avoid them? Mm-hmm. And how do you think you are maintaining those, or did it not? Does it matter? Not matter now as a senior. So yes, yeah, so when I first came, I of course gravitated towards the my St. Thomas friends. In fact, I've had the same three girlfriends since I was in like third grade. See, that's so all. I, I always love yeah. those stories. When you yes. Get those. So we and I think we're definitely looking to maintain that, even though uh, my other friends are going out of state for college. But then also, I've made new friends since coming here. Uh, that you know maybe went to St. Gerard, or you know I've had like international students that are friends with me. And we're looking to maintain that because they might be going to the same college as me or, you know, just trying to like be in constant communication, which also helps now that we have like social media and stuff. We can stay in track with everyone. So, so as nice. a for, for the incoming freshmen, mm-hmm. how do you think or what advice do you have for them to kind of look beyond your middle school labels? So I'm no longer a res kid. I'm no longer a St. Thomas. I'm no longer St. Mary's. I'm Lansing Catholic. I'm a cougar. I think it will come naturally because a lot of our school is about community and just being diligent and, you know, communicating with more people and just, you know, going up and striking conversations with people and just having the confidence to be able to do that. It'll be a fruitful experience. Very nice. Yeah. I thought of a question, but now I forgot. Well, that Short doesn't help. Short attention <laughs> span. What was it about, Father? Let's help I, you think of it. I don't That'll remember. Riveting See, radio. Was no. it about my faith? <laughs> No, it's it's gone. I'll probably think of it halfway through uh, the mailbag. Well, we perfect. Then we'll time. ask it then. So, <laughs> well, thanks, Madeline, for coming on the show. It's great to hear from you. Yeah. Thank oh, you I so remember much. my question. Oh, Here okay. It. See, go, go there it is. Magic. It. The magic of thought and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, yeah. I remember you were talking about possibly going to Ohio State. Yes. So I'm just curious, how did you end up landing with Michigan State? So she, she okay. realized it was in Ohio. <laughs> So, okay, I, I did, yeah. So, <laughs> so, yes, Ohio State has always been, like, my number one school. I think what happened, though, is that, so I got accepted there. I got accepted, ooh, maybe, like, a month ago now, maybe three weeks ago now, and I got direct admission to their business school, which I did not get at Michigan State. Uh, so we kind of talked through, like, the pros and cons. First of all, Ohio State is very expensive out of state, and the uh-huh. scholarships that I applied for, I did not get. So that would have been the number one problem. Was Do you want us to contact somebody about that? <laughs> <laughs> kind of strong arm them? Yeah, so <laughs> that, that would be great. But I, I already paid my advanced enrollment deposit for Michigan State. So, uh, so yeah, we talked through the pros and cons. And just I'm very young. I don't turn 18 until end of August. So I'll still be 17, you know, going into this humongous campus of, I think it's like 65,000 people just at Ohio State. It's one of the biggest campuses in the world. And I know that I could handle that, but I think just for the peace of mind of everyone around me and myself, I realized that just going to Michigan State, at least for my first year, would be a good choice. And I mean, it's not like Michigan State isn't a super reputable school. I'm happy with the decision that I made. And, you know, one day I hope to end up at Ohio State, maybe for a master's degree. That is, that would be amazing. Well, for now, Michigan State is lucky to have you. Thank Absolutely. you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let's switch over to our mailbag for the day. So the question is, and maybe uh, maybe Maddie, you can help us answer some of this. Uh, if you're going to get your first job, how do you get a work permit? So I don't even know what that means. Like, do you need a work <laughs> permit or something to get a job? Yes. I believe if you're under 16, mm-hmm. you have to have. One. Oh, okay. yeah, so I, I, I had to 16. get one. Yes, I just I got see. it from the front office. Where did you, what was your first job, Maddie? I worked at a grocery store near my house. Oh, so yeah, as a bagger. Was, no, I like cleaned. That was that was my main thing. I just I just cleaned everything. Like well, that was all I did. It was just clean. Do you like mop the floors yes. or wipe down the cans of Yes, the bathrooms. Yeah. And then you know like the pop can yep. machines? I had to empty those because it wasn't Oh, like, you were the bottle person. Yeah. So I, I did a bunch of things. But I really enjoyed it. The people I worked with were really nice. They were all college students, but they never treated me as, you know, less than them. So Father, was what really was nice. your first job? 
Uh, well, uh, when I was aside from mowing a lawn, <laughs> when I was uh, real young, I did like babysitting. I taught piano lessons. Actually, did you really? I did. And then I think when I was 15, I started working on my brother's construction uh, crew, building houses. And that was uh, uh, eye-opening, to say the least, to I be on a construction crew. I you learned some new very, words. Didn't you about very it? sheltered, homeschool 15-year-old. Yes, I learned some new vocabulary. I remember being having that like shock feeling whenever I heard swear words and F-bombs, and then I pretty quickly got used to it because I wasn't around people that would do that around me. <laughs> Uh, See, so yeah, I worked for construct that construction crew for I think four years, four summers, which was good. It was mm-hmm. good You're outside getting a good time. Yeah, it was good hard work, and you learn lots of valuable life skills. Now I help on these mission trips, building things, and these kids are like, how do you know how to do all this stuff? I was like, well, I did do a few things before I became a priest. I used to work. Did you say one of the crew. the requirements for being a priest, much like Jesus, is to be a carpenter? Yeah, well, <laughs> I I am certainly fulfilling that one if that's a requirement. So, so to, answer, your- to answer your actual question, Father, and then we'll get to me. Uh, stop by the main office, and you can pick up a work permit, um, or there's a, the student page on our website. We'll have them as well. Uh, you take that permit to your work. They'll fill out the form and then bring it back to the main office to Mrs. Carlson, and she will uh, sign it, fill it out, and give it back to you to bring to your new job. Um, if you are getting paid under the table, th- you probably don't have to do this, but if this is a legitimate job, <laughs> then you're okay. Can I, can I interject with a relevant funny story? Absolutely. That's okay. the whole point of okay. this podcast, So Maddie. I remember I got my work permit, and I accidentally left it in my locker over the weekend I was supposed to do my orientation at work. So I was like, oh, no, like this, my employer is going to think I'm just. And mm-hmm. all the people were upset because the bottle return <laughs> yes. was full. So, yeah. So it was like my orientation where you have to, you know, give them your social security and like fill out all the paperwork and stuff. And I didn't have my work permit. This is the night before I'm realizing this at 10 o'clock. And I'm with Morgan, my neighbor. And I called her mom because I knew she was still here, Mrs. Wilcox. And I was like, Mrs. Wilcox, I left my work permit in my locker. Will you please get it? And that's the most grateful I think I've ever been in my whole <laughs> life. She got it and delivered it to me. So, yeah, don't forget your work permit in your locker at school like I did if you're getting a job. I See, there's this, yeah. another slogan by the Lancet Catholic. We're always here to help. I th- yes. <laughs> I thought the story was going the direction of uh, you forging your work permit. No. So this is a much better uh, resolution to the issue. No, no, no. Yeah, I, 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 I would never it. do that. 100% but. I would have forged it. <laughs> so what was your first job? So I've had a lot of interesting jobs in my time. But my first actual job, I was I um, worked at a golf course. So the first thing we had to do was uh, after all the the tea times were over we'd go back through with our little golf cart and our giant garbage can full of seed and pick up all the divots put them in the garbage can and then put seed over the the divots and then eventually i got promoted to the guy who drives uh, the range cart and picks up the golf balls um and that was great until the time when i was picking one of the hills and i flipped the entire cart over and all the golf balls I had oh, picked no. up had just spilled back on there. And so I'm over here as like a 14, 15-year-old kid using all my 80 pounds of muscle to, <laughs> to push the cart back up there without anybody noticing. And I did. And to this day, no one knows. I mean, obviously they don't care. but Unless they listen to this episode, then they're going to know. Which would be happened. really weird. And yeah, <laughs> if I get a bill for a golf cart, then... Uh, we're going to have to redact this. Did you ever get hit by a ball when you were in the driving range? I did. I think there was one time I did. And, and, and any time. the golf cart's like all armored up, yep, right? Yep, yep. It's got the. Well, I mean, back. This was, you know, this is mid 90s or so. And they didn't have the proper technology that we have now. So it was basically just chicken wire <laughs> around there. And, and maybe it was a little stronger. I guess it was sturdy. Rooster wire is probably what it is. So it was a little sturdier. And so if you got smacked, it would make a really loud noise. And so I remember there was one kid. Because any time the punk kids came out, <laughs> their main goal was, was not to, to get you. better at golf. It was to hit the of range. Of course, your target cart. practice. Sure. And they're terrible at golf as it is. So the fact that they think they can hit the cart, but one kid did. And so and I remember um, turning around yelling at him. But I don't think he'd hear it. He was too busy cheering with his friends. So, <laughs> All right, everyone. I think that's all we got for today. Uh, what do we say? That's a wrap. I don't think we've ever said that. <laughs> you told me last time that that's what you say in show business. Oh, yeah, yeah I did say that. So I take back what I just that's said. That's a wrap, everyone. Have a great uh, week, and we'll see you next time. I'm Father Joe. And I'm Mr. Stolpa. And I'm the guest, Madeline. <laughs> <laughs> I like that new one. We're going to add that. Good job, Maddie. <laughs>